The committee investigating Donald Trump's attempted coup on January 6th held its first televised hearing tonight. And in advance of that hearing, more audio emerged of a phone call in which House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy said in the days after the insurrection that there should be an investigation into what happened and the people responsible should be held accountable, which is notable, of course, since McCarthy, like most of his fellow Republicans, have since changed their tune to appease Trump. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. We do not know exactly what happened at the hearing tonight because we are taping this before it airs, but I'm hoping they really jazzed it up for TV and invited some surprise guests. I want to now introduce our, our witnesses today and swear them in. Our first witness is... Rudy Giuliani! I'm guessing you could trick Rudy Giuliani into going anywhere if you put him in a jack-in-a-box costume like that. <laughs> One day we're gonna see federal agents carrying him out of his apartment building in that costume. You guys promise we're going to America's Got Talent, right? In that case, I'm gonna crawl back in my box and go over the lyrics to fireworks so I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> you know, I'm guessing that didn't happen, although we don't know for sure since as of this taping, we haven't seen the hearing, which gives us something in common with viewers of Fox News, which announced in advance that it wouldn't be airing the hearing live. Fox News making a programming decision. It's sticking with its primetime lineup on Thursday. Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity. This is instead of showing the January 6th select committee hearing concerning the Capitol Hill riot. Of course Fox isn't airing a very key suspect in it. They would be... <laughs> that would be like if Court TV's coverage of the OJ trial had been hosted by OJ. Whoops, sorry, fellas. The, uh, the mic keeps slipping out of these leather gloves, which fit perfectly. I mean, they're too small. Damn it, cut. No, not cut. Stop taping. Fox was an active participant in spreading the big lie that led to the attempted coup and has since helped whitewash and cover up what happened. In fact, the January 6th committee has already revealed private texts from Fox hosts like Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, and Brian Kilmeade to Trump Chief of Staff Frank Meadows on the day of the riot. Imagine if the committee read those text messages and then Fox cut back to Hannity or Ingram. It'd be like watching that Planet Earth clip where the snakes chase the iguana and then at the end, they cut to an interview with the snakes. Uh, look, I know it looks bad. We were just trying to, I don't know, help the iguana. Look, it's the food chain. In fact, we already know, thanks to the January 6th committee, not to take anything Fox hosts say seriously, since behind the scenes, they were privately imploring Trump to quell the mob. They knew it was his fault, and they knew he had the power to stop it. They won't say that in public, but they did say it in private. Multiple Fox News hosts knew the president needed to act immediately. They texted Mr. Meadows, and he has turned over those texts. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram wrote. Please get him on TV, destroying everything you have accomplished, Brian Kilmeade texted. Quote, can he make a statement, ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. First of all, I'm shocked to learn that Brian Kilmeade is capable of texting at all. I just assume he does all his communicating via tin can attached to a string. <laughs> Second, and more importantly, they all knew. They said stuff like, this is hurting us all, destroying his legacy, can he ask people to leave? They were watching the ride on TV, like the rest of us, and they all knew it was bad and that Trump could stop it, just like the rest of us. As you can see from these private texts, they weren't sitting there thinking this is just a peaceful protest or this is all Antifa's fault. They knew Trump could stop it if he wanted to, which makes them liars. They don't even believe their own bull In a way, it would at least be more honest if we found out that behind the scenes they were texting stuff like, I can't believe Antifa and the radical left are staging this false flag operation to frame Trump <laughs> and his supporters and stop him from proving the election was stolen. Besides, this is just a peaceful protest that it's all Nancy Pelosi's fault. Anyway, what are you doing for dinner? Do you want to eat a big uncooked ham with me tonight? Just you, me, and a giant uncooked ham, you win. Mark, I'm not getting a response, Mark. Mark, you there, Mark? Mark, I'm about to cut into this big, delicious, uncooked ham all by myself. I don't need to wait for the oven to heat up because I'm not gonna cook it. Okay, your loss. Mark, Antifa gave me food poisoning. It's not the uncooked ham. And by the way, 
They were not the only Trump supporters who were privately horrified by the insurrection while publicly lying about it or making excuses for it. Just last night, more bombshell audio of GOP House leader Kevin McCarthy surfaced from the days after the insurrection, in which McCarthy was adamant that there should be a full investigation of the riot and that whoever was responsible should be punished. And he even went so far as to tell his fellow Republicans on that call that he had personally confronted Trump. Five days later, McCarthy spoke to his members. And again, it's on tape. McCarthy said that he got on the phone, he talked to Trump, and that he castigated him, and he told him to call off the mob. When they started breaking into my office, um, myself and the staff got removed from the office. In doing so, I made a phone call to the president, um, telling him what was going on, asking him to tell these people to stop, to make a video, and go out. And I, I was very intense and very loud about it. I mean, I would imagine any time you talk to Trump, you have to be very loud about it. The dude on the other end of that phone call is so loud, he routinely did his press conferences next to a roaring helicopter. <laughs> and we could still hear every word he said. I mean, just look at his face. He always, he always looks like the villain in an action movie who realizes the hero has defused the bomb. Damn you, Jean-Claude! <laughs> but even more revealing than that part of the phone call was the part where McCarthy specifically went out of his way to insist that the events of January 6th deserve a full investigation and that the people responsible should be held accountable. During that call, McCarthy also is on tape vowing to make someone pay for the attack, even raising the idea of a bipartisan commission to investigate. We cannot just sweep this under the rug. We need to know why it happened, who did it, and people need to be held accountable for it. And I'm committed to make sure that happens. Strong words, but then a few weeks later, he was at Mar-a-Lago posing for this photo with Donald Trump where they look like rival strip club owners acting like nothing ever happened. <laughs> He basically yada, yada, yada an attempted coup. On that phone call, you just heard, just days after the insurrection, he literally said the words, we can't sweep this under the rug. And now, he's essentially showing up to all his interviews on Fox News with a giant broom. Also, <laughs> side note here, but what is it with these guys constantly getting caught on tape saying damning stuff? Over the last six or so years, I've honestly lost count. The number of times some Trump-adjacent doofus like Rudy or McCarthy or Trump himself has been caught on tape directly contradicting something they said in public. Next, we're gonna find out that behind the scenes, Rudy Giuliani is actually a very normal guy who never makes this face. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, we use that photo a lot. But do you know, do you know what he's doing in that photo? He's taking a closer look. That's where, <laughs> that's where we got the idea. Yeah, we were like, oh. Secret tapes are gonna emerge of Rudy doing normal stuff, like watching Ozark or paying his cable bill or checking into a hotel looking like this. Hello. <laughs> my name is Rudy Giuliani. I'm here to check into the actual Four Seasons Hotel for a normal vacation with my normal wife, who is not now, nor has ever been my cousin. <laughs> so in private, McCarthy told his fellow Republicans the coup attempt couldn't be swept under the rug. Now he's doing exactly that, going on Fox and trying to sweep it under the rug by slamming the investigation as illegitimate and claiming it shouldn't even be happening. What they're doing in this committee is going after their political foes, their opponents. We've watched it time and again. What we have found with one party rule of Democrats taking over the House, the Senate, and the presidency, they use the power to go after their political opponents instead of bringing down gasoline prices. Today, it has now doubled since the gasoline price since President Biden has taken office. Are they gonna have any hearings mm -hmm. on that? They always do this annoying thing where they're like, people care more about gas prices. You know, we're all capable of caring about more than one thing at a time, right? I, I think people can focus on an attack on democracy. I mean, what else are they gonna do? They can't drive anywhere because gas is so expensive, but... <laughs> McCarthy's opposition to the investigation is also self-interested since he was personally subpoenaed by the committee and he told Fox that he responded to that subpoena with a bunch of questions. Did you receive a subpoena from the January 6th committee? And if so, how did you respond? I, I did receive a subpoena and uh, I, I requested, I asked for information, 11 pages. Uh, I sent a letter to this committee. I sent a letter to this committee a year ago when they asked to talk to me and they never responded. Probably because your questions were super dumb. I mean, I'm just guessing, but I'm pretty confident that they were super dumb. It's like when you invite your friends to a party and most people just RSVP, but then one guy writes back, will there be a DJ? And if not, can I bring my turntable? 
Also, does your house have European outlets or should I bring converters? <laughs> also, you're obviously entitled to ask whatever questions you want, but ultimately, it's a subpoena. You have to comply. Although, maybe not anymore. It does feel like this committee is pretty easy to say no to. The Justice Department just announced they won't even charge two former Trump aides with contempt of Congress for refusing to cooperate. They react the way I do when I'm trying to get my kids to eat. Finish your pasta. I don't want to. Great. Then I guess you'll just go hungry. Why don't you go think about it while you play video games? Yeah, all right. <laughs> and when Republicans aren't actively obstructing the investigation, they're claiming no one's gonna watch because people would rather spend their time doing other things. This is not a fact-finding mission. This is a two-hour free documentary sponsored by virtually every major network in America except for this one that's willing to give it airtime. The only good thing about it is most Americans aren't gonna watch this garbage. Okay, so the question, does it work? Do people watch? Well, I, I let, I'd be interested to see what the ratings are going to be. This is kind of like watching, are they going to go watch Top Gun, which is entertainment, or are they going to watch the J6, uh, you know, TV-produced uh, show? Uh, again, you know, it's not an either-or, right? You can watch Top Gun and the hearing. You don't have to pick one. It's not like people are showing up to the movie theaters and the only two choices at the ticket counter are Top Gun or a two-hour congressional hearing. <laughs> Although I will say, you gotta see the hearings on IMAX. That's what everybody, you haven't experienced true cinema until you've seen a close up of Rudy Giuliani's teeth on a 52 foot IMAX screen. Ugh. Anybody? Anybody want the rest of my raisinets? Also, can we go back to this? This is a two-hour free documentary sponsored by virtually every major network in America. You know, now you're suddenly against TV networks given one side free airtime. I don't seem to remember you objecting when Fox aired Trump's marathon rallies live or when he used to call into Fox and Friends once a week and just scream whatever the hell he wanted unchallenged for an entire hour while the host just sat there on the couch with blank stares on their faces like <laughs> Jeopardy contestants getting a question about rap lyrics. Again, we don't know exactly what happened in this hearing tonight because we're taping beforehand, but we do know some of the most important stuff already, which is that Donald Trump was at the center of an attempted coup to overturn American democracy and remain in power as an unelected tyrant against the will of the people. He pulled the strings, and his fellow Republicans, including his friends on Fox, knew what he was doing, they knew it was wrong, and they knew we had the power to stop it. Kevin McCarthy even went out of his way to say that this can't be swept under the rug. They said that about the insurrection, the same thing. Everyone in the audience at the Mass Singer said when they heard Rudy Giuliani's singing voice, which is? This is hurting all of us. It's been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.